If you grew up any time before the 1980s, then there's a good chance that you did things that a lot of kids today never have. Many of those activities were something that we never thought about until later in life. As we reflect back on our lives, we realize that most kids today don't have the same opportunities. In this video, we will have a look back at some of the dangerous things that kids used to do. It's difficult for many people to believe now, but there was a time when seat belts and car seats were more of a recommendation rather than a regulation. Beginning in 1968, every new vehicle that was sold in the U.S. was required to have a lap and shoulder seat belt in the front outward seats. However, it wasn't until the 1980s when we saw the first mandatory seat belt wearing laws, which were in New York and New Jersey, in 1984. If you were around prior to that time period, then you got to experience riding in the back of a pickup truck or crammed into the back of a station wagon with tons of other kids. One other thing that many of us kids did was stick our arm out the window of a moving car. Most cars today have air conditioning, but that wasn't always the case. We stuck our arms out the window to help cool off, and it was also super fun. It was like our very own personal wind tunnel, and it taught us some of the very basics in aerodynamics. Very few activities can ever feel as free as a kid climbing in a tree. It's a thrilling adventure that helps us problem solve, and it also teaches us hand-eye coordination skills. This activity was a great way to get fresh air and build confidence at the same time. Some parents today may try to discourage this tree climbing behavior, but hopefully it will continue on into the future. Earlier we spoke about seatbelts, which sort of had an effect on this next activity. As kids, we all enjoyed sitting on Dad's lap so that we could drive the car. Dad may have worked the pedals, but we were in full control of the steering wheel. We did this on public streets, and back then no one thought anything about it. Just a kid learning to steer a two-ton hunk of metal under parental supervision. It really was a great skill to learn. Kids need a little adventure in their lives, and if you were around in the 1970s, then someone like Evil Knievel was one of your heroes. Pedaling your bike as fast as you can off the end of a bike ramp was as close as you could get to flying. We were all daredevils, and we never backed down from a challenge. Back then, we made our own bike ramps, and it was super fun to see what we could jump over. This was just good old-fashioned fun without a helmet or knee pads. That is a pure nightmare for many parents today. Remember climbing up on your roof as a kid? Maybe you went up there to get a better look at the stars, but you were certainly going to get a bird's eye view of your neighborhood. Many of the roofs on houses today are much more steeper than what we had, but it's still unlikely that you will ever see kids on the roof in some of the older homes. Modern parents would probably have a heart attack because they probably haven't done it either. Climbing wasn't only restricted to trees and roofs. Even the public school system would encourage it. Remember in PE class when you had to climb the gym rope? We were all expected to do this whether you were scared of heights or not. It was the only way that you could ever get rid of your fear. Ropes have been removed from most school gyms due to the perceived risk that a child could fall from the top. They were also probably concerned about the risk of injury to self-esteem of the kid who couldn't even make it halfway up. Another fun pastime activity that many of us enjoyed revolved around railroad tracks. Perhaps you went along the tracks walking on the rail or hopping from one railroad tie to another. But that wasn't all that we did. We used to place pennies on the tracks so that the next train could run over them and flatten it out. Today this is not only discouraged but illegal. Too many people got hurt by moving trains while doing something on the tracks. Long before cell phones and iPods ruled the world, kids had to think up their own activities. We could easily pretend to be anything that we wanted. All that we really needed was a stick and a little imagination. Do you remember pretending to be a knight with your stick in a trash can lid and then fighting your friend? Trash cans like that are sort of rare today, and parents certainly don't want to see other kids swinging a stick at their kid. 
but it really was a fun activity for many of us. If we could get our hands on a magnifying glass, then we had hours of entertainment. We could not only burn holes in paper and leaves, but we could also melt plastic and catch strings on fire. It was also super fun to try and burn our name into pieces of wood. And no ant was ever safe if it came near us. Most parents today would never allow this sort of behavior. So here's your iPod, kid. Kids are always curious creatures. They want to know how the world works and what all is out there. Many of us used to visit construction sites and it was neat to see things being built and we could also pretend to be explorers. Even the guys working on the construction site would allow us to do a little exploring. And if we ever got in good with them, then they would give us scraps of lumber, which was great for building bike ramps, forts, and clubhouses. Today, this is something that is off limits, and most sites have a no trespassing sign, fences, and cameras to try to prevent this from happening. Exploring as a kid is important. It helps to teach us the necessary skills that we will need to drive a car or even work in some professional fields. It taught us to not be afraid of going somewhere that we hadn't been. If we saw a tunnel, we were going in it. If there were woods nearby, then we could have countless adventures in them. The best part about it is it was just us and our friends. We didn't have parents with us and we certainly did not have phones that tracked our every little move. We were free and trusted to go anywhere we wanted and that seems to be something that most kids are lacking today. Swimming was and has always been an activity that most kids love. Many people prefer pools and it even seems like more people have them than ever before. But many of us also love going to the ocean and lakes. If we could find a cliff or a bridge to jump off and it was safe looking, then we did it. It wasn't for those that were scared of heights or bad swimmers, but most of us did take the necessary precautions to be safe. Was the water deep enough? Did we have enough clearance? What was the proper way to enter the water? Those were all things that we had to consider. Again, we did not have our parents with us and we certainly did not have 911 readily available on our cell phones everywhere we went. We had to be careful and that's what this taught us. Going back to us kids finding something to do, a hammer, nails, and a piece of wood could go a long ways. Most dads had stuff like this lying around the house and they even encouraged us to do it. It was the only way that we could gain experience using something that we would need later in life. A lot of parents today don't even let their kids do this for fear of them squishing their little fingers. Yes, that can happen, but again, how else will you learn? You have to make mistakes in order to learn. Truth be known, there are probably a lot of younger dads out there that have never even picked up a hammer themselves. What kid doesn't love fireworks? Sure, they love watching them, but in our day, we love setting them off. We all may have started out with something very basic and then worked our way up to something bigger and then even bigger after that. We learned to respect them and we also learned about the dangers if we did not. By about the age of 9 or 10, we were ready to set off pretty well anything at the fireworks stand. Today, many parents are a little apprehensive to allow their kids to have that amount of freedom. Of course, it doesn't help that many cities, towns, and communities no longer allow personal fireworks. But in reality, fireworks can teach kids to learn about general principles of safety and respect for others as well as yourself. Speaking of learning about general safety, how many of us had pocket knives by the age of 9 or 10? It was like a rite of passage for a young boy. We had to learn how to cut away from us and also how to pass a blade safely to someone else. This responsibility was something that we didn't take lightly and it opened us up to a whole new world of activities. It also prepared us for using power tools later on down the road. The modern world certainly isn't any more dangerous than it was 40 or 50 years ago, but the way we treat our kids could certainly have an effect on that. It's okay for your kids to have a few bumps and bruises while they are learning and having fun. Are there some basic safety rules that they need to be taught? Absolutely! But don't prevent them from acquiring skills that will help them later in life. 
One of the biggest things that many parents have taken away from their kids is the ability to use their imagination. Research has shown that it is crucial to developing innovative ideas which can lead to new inventions. I hope you enjoyed this little look into some of the dangerous things that kids used to do. Can you think of any others? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.